It's going to happen this time, Eric. It is? Should I be yes. pre- Should I be prepared or scared? You should not only be, well, scared, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> prepared, absolutely. Okay. But inevitably, it's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I heard. At least from you. <laughs> <laughs> I tell myself that about things all the time. Oh. And sometimes it, it comes true. Mm, what's happening? Well, whatever it is, you know what I need is to have resolve oh. when I when I say those things, you know? Mm, okay, I, I think I'm following, I think. Because if I'm not resolved, there will be no resolution. Hmm. And we're we're starting a resolution. No, that's revolution. We're starting a resolution. <laughs> Very often, <laughs> yes. in a new year, people make resolutions. That is true. Okay. And I, I think that's a good thing, or it can be a good thing. I think it can be also a not great thing for mm-hmm. people, but it, it all depends. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I mean, I like that as a concept to talk about. Right. Because it, it's actually creative. Right. It's I'm going to make something different in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to handle the the moments I'm living with differently. Right. Yes. Yes. On some basic level that applies to any New Year's resolution you could make. Mm -hmm. And I understand also uh, uh, to our listeners and followers, it's been a while since we dropped an episode of The Heart of the Cards. We have been so preoccupied with some other demands, uh, both professionally and personally. Nothing tragic. Thank goodness. No. Um, but uh, we have been caught up with other things. So um, we're very glad to be able to squeak this episode in right before January ends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yes. we, and we promise one of our resolutions is um, uh, to get back into the swing Yes, and I... not leave you guys hanging for so long. So apologies for the delay, but we are no less uh, delighted to keep on having this conversation with each other and with you all. Um, and with that, maybe we should resolve to go on ahead with this conversation about resolutions. Let's do it. Welcome to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Hey, this is Dan Green. And Eric Stewart. And this is episode 35 of the Heart of the Cards. Kicking off the new year. Exactly. I'm liking 2024 so far. Yeah, I've had a lot of snow here in uh, N- Nashville. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> be, those words don't go together, Nashville and they snow. They don't. That's not yeah, so, but no. but I but I yeah, I have to say I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm liking it so far. Not You've the, had a couple of chances snow. to see each other. Not the snow so much. No, no, course. no. Yes, yes, we have. Yeah, those appearances were fun. Always great to meet people. Yeah, it's it's always great. I mean, and and uh, we 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 rarely do back to back weekends like that. So. Um, uh, oh but, yeah, but it yeah. was. But I mean, with all the traveling and all of that, whatever. But it still was. Uh, the, it was nice to yeah, hang tr- out with each other. The and, people are yeah. the people are great. The travel, not so much. Yeah, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think of it as as um, like banking up on uh, all of my bad karma points. So hopefully, some good karma. Yeah, comes and, my way. I, and I what I do work. is I read the articles about like these ridiculous nightmare, uh, like passengers and things like that. Like after I get home, I think, oh well, oh, yeah. my flight was yeah. bad and the and the delays or the cancellations, but I didn't have that guy on my flight. Exactly, <laughs> or that door fly off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that old plane. that old thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a topper. That one. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Well, so as we are embracing this new year, uh, we, we, we can also share that we had really wonderful holiday seasons, mm-hmm. um, and I, I saw family, and that was great, and it, it's always good to have a chance to take a step back uh, away from the humdrum, the day-to-day, mm-hmm. and I think that's what drives people to reconsider where they're at and, and make some decisions about what they want to do differently with their upcoming year. Mm-hmm. So, Eric, tell me, do you have any resolutions in mind for this? Because I don't do it every year. You know, I don't say to myself, because uh, I don't I don't choose New Year's as a time to start thinking about those things. Because like many people, you know that you can do that at any time. Correct. Um, Correct. But it but it makes sense to me why it comes to mind, uh, you know, of course, in, in a New Year's season. 
So what's your history with making New Year's resolutions? And do you have any this year? Yes. Yeah, so I, I have to agree with you. Like I, I've never really used the anchor of it's New Year's Eve time to uh, look at what I've done and make some adjustments and things like that. Um, I mean, the same reason that I don't think that it's only the holidays when you should get together with your family. Um, you know, sure. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, 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 you can make those right. plans all, you know, all throughout the year. And you can also make those uh, decisions on maybe how to better oneself um, throughout the year. Um, mm-hmm. But I mm-hmm. do I do take into account sort of the wrap up. And I think because a lot of that's also forced on us as well from, you know, OK, sure. end of fiscal sure. year and uh, or, you know, looking at, you know, getting mm-hmm. ready for taxes or whatever it is. There's a lot of things mm-hmm. that are kind of like, well, I don't care what you really think. We're going to make this sort of like, you know, an anchor. Um, but I, I think for me, right. like I I looked at. This year in particular, and, and you and I have had this, uh, these conversations, uh, you know, off the air, um, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's this this uh, I don't want to say <laughs> I'm trying to retire from a lot of stuff, but I really am. <laughs> I'm, I'm really finding that um, I just I really want to make more time for what really matters. And I love working yep. and I love traveling mm-hmm. to see the fans mm-hmm. and, and do these events and, and also to get to see some of the, the, the people that are my friends that I never really get to spend time with outside of that. Um, but, I mean, even just today, I said no to something and I felt really mm. good about saying no to something um, work-related. Mm. Um and and once again, mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want anyone to think, oh well, that's because he's so rich and famous. He doesn't he thinks he's all that. No, no, no. It's more like I I just I don't want that that time to be taken up by that because that's probably gonna be something that could take a lot of my time away from, I don't know, spending time with my wife and and maybe going mm-hmm. away on a, a on a vacation, which I it is such a strange word for me to say out loud. Um <laughs> so that's really been that's really been where my 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 resolution is is that I I have a couple of things that I really want to just pull the trigger and get them done. I just feel like yeah, I've been yeah. procrastinating on a on a bunch of different things and I need to just get them done. So um mm-hmm. one of them is you know, uh, for, for for those of you who've been following my crazy life um, a little bit, you know, my wife and I both still live in separate places, and I want to find something that we can do together. I want to find whether it's a you know a getaway place or whatever, mm-hmm. or even if it's just mm-hmm. a vacation, mm-hmm. a longer vacation in a place that she wants to go to that I've never been, and I, I just want to yeah, make some yeah. more of those memories together. Um, of course. Well, now you've shared that with me, uh, you know, previously, yeah. or not on air, as you yeah. as you've said. And um, but I always thought you guys were living in separate places because she doesn't like you that much. Well, there's Am that. I, wrong? There's that. Okay. And there's also that completely <laughs> different lifestyle approach. You know, <laughs> I have way too many guitars and video games, <laughs> and she's an adult. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, ow. Um, yeah. So, so that's kind of that's kind of where you know one of the resolutions. I also um, the uh, the the other thing is. I think with with the big shift in how we were dealing with socializing and stuff like that during all the COVID lockdown stuff, we really sure. sort of um, lost touch with a lot of people that were, um, you know, part of your day to day, your hang, your your, you know, yeah. that that yeah. that sort of they don't have to be your best friends, but that that sort of casual socializing that is so like absent from my world. It's so like yeah, I don't yeah. need to be going out all the time. I don't need to um, throw parties at my house. That's not who I am. You know me. That's not you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm, uh, um, mm-hmm. But but I feel like I need to make a little bit more of an effort that way. I've I've gotten into a habit now. When uh, and a friend of mine just reached out to me a couple of weeks ago. I haven't spoken to him in a while, and. Um, he said, "Hey man, how's it going? Uh, hey, uh, you know, just wondering what you're up to. Uh, maybe we should, uh, you know, grab a cup of coffee sometime." And I said, "Yeah, let's make a date right now." And he said, yeah. "Okay." And I said, 
the, the next week is great. Any time next week work for you? He was like, yeah, let's do it. And he got all excited too about like just putting it in the in the schedule. We picked a time and we met for a coffee and had a great chat and a great catch up. And, mm-hmm. you know, as I was sitting with him, I said, you know, like you're a buddy of mine. Like I like you. We get along. Um, there's no reason why, whether it's, I don't know, every other month or whatever, we don't grab a cup of coffee or maybe even go out to dinner and have a hang. Why it's, not? Right. But like, I am so guilty of not making that even part of my daily life, like thinking about that. Oh, because I, I am so with you. Right. That, but once I do it, I'm like, wait a second. It's not like I have to give up everything to to make time for this person, but I actually enjoy their company. I should figure mm-hmm. out a way to when we do think of each other, right? Because people mm-hmm. cross your mind all the time. You go, oh, I wonder what so-and-so is doing. Well, I'm actually trying now to reach out to so-and-so when they, when they when I think of them. And actually, well, I, make I don't a date. have friends, but I'll take your word for it. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it sounds like it's a good an, idea. It's an interesting thing. The whole show we work on revolves around friendship. You might want to pay attention. <laughs> oh shoot! So anyway, um, that's kind of where actually I am. committing a date. Yeah, committing, putting it, you know, in the planner, at whatever, whether it's paper or electronic, right? But putting it on the calendar. Of course, you know, you say those things and you mean those things, and those are nice affirmations, you know, that you like each other and right. so forth, but following through is so much better. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. felt really good about it, as simple as it was. I was like, we had coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay us. Anyway, so that's, that's <laughs> kind of where my brain is. Um, how about you? I can, to- I can totally relate to what you were just saying, and actually I was just thinking last night, I got to reach out to... Uh, to Anthony Hayden Salerno, Tony, mm-hmm. uh, our audience knows who that is, um, and and a friend of his from grade school and high school who I got to know when I got to be friends with Tony in college because his friend Pete would come, and and so and I was like, oh man, because last year or no maybe it was over a year ago, um, the three just the three of us got together. Uh, and it was at a pub or whatever. Yeah, we just hung out for a couple of hours, but it meant so much. It, it felt like uh, carving out that little island of social activity among the stream of everything else that was going on. Not only felt good for just what it was in the you know in the time we spent together, but just as a reminder to myself that oh yeah, I can create these little these little <laughs> oases of mm-hmm. <laughs> fun and and. Um, and last night I was like, okay, I got to get together with Tony and Pete because I really want to talk about Peter Gabriel and UFO stuff and yeah. <laughs> some other things. And I just know that those guys, in, you know, will be on the same page with a lot of that. So. Yeah. That's, that, you know, that's a good point that you bring up. It's like uh, not everyone that we're friends with shares the same sort of geekdom or passions, uh, you know. In exactly the same way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we, we have our, we have our, you know, if, if we only speak to one or two people all the time um not only will they become bored with the same stories uh but the, but the other thing is that is that there are categories i've never that, said that out loud i know there there are categories in our in our in our in our life that we we like you know there's people that we talk to about this and there's people that we talk to about that and it's not like mm-hmm. we don't want to share all of that with everyone but it's like the connection right, right? so yeah right. and once you do that once you find you find those little <laughs> different groups you're like oh yeah cuz all of those things are in my brain um right. But, right but the person i'm i'm spending the most time with doesn't have all of those things in their brain so i've got to sort of find my little different groups my little clicks right Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure you like me, we family is first, mm-hmm. right? And so you're in better touch with that part of your life. Yes. But sometimes that doesn't leave a lot of room for friends who aren't right there in front of you. You know? Yeah. That is true. I mean, with with all that, all of that trying to coordinate whether like, oh, okay, you know, are are they going to get along with my kids or you know, or you know, whatever your your partner or whatever it is, like, um, you know, you're no longer a, like a single entity, right? Right. Which is also right. like that adds that adds to a whole other dynamic of, um, you know, um, do, do will everyone get along? So whether or not it's related to this New Year's tradition of 
making resolutions, you have found yourself lately focusing on wanting to, well, to borrow a sort of a catchphrase from a year, few years ago, uh, find a better work-life balance, right? You're, yes. you're, you're saying no to some work, and you're also making time for the other parts of your life that really enrich you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think that it's, it's, it sounds great to say it, but um, I, re- yeah. I really need to make, <laughs> you know, and I think I've, I've done much better than I have in the past, but um, I'm finding it um, more of like, okay, I can accomplish this and also still do the things that I love to do for my work and for my, you know, mm-hmm. for my passion of you know, being creative. But um, also that just that other that other part of it, which, you know, I think adds to everything, right? Because if you're, mm-hmm. you're if, you know, clearing your brain of all that stuff and, and making time for friends and family and things like that, um, when you do come back to the creative, um, you know, that, that canvas, um, you, uh, you might have better ideas. Oh, for sure. You know? Absolutely. Like I found that, they don't, they don't work at odds. No. Right. And, yeah. And like this weekend, um, a couple of the uh, the, the the fans that came mm-hmm. up to us who were very talented mm-hmm. artists showed me a couple yeah. of things that they had created, and I was like, "That is so cool! What did you use to do that? That's amazing!" And you know, mm-hmm. there's one side of me that's like just excited because people are doing their own thing, which is fantastic, and the other side yeah. of me is I'm taking notes. I'm like. You know, not because mm-hmm. I want to, ha- you know, start a business, you know, drawing and painting and all of that. But you know, when I think about creative things that I can do around the house and and, and how I use paint or how I'm doing, like a, you know, doing uh, DIY oh, sure. projects, I'm sure. looking like, like, mm-hmm. how did you get that cool, like that that look or that texture or you know, what were you using for that color? What was and I, I like I come home and I'm like, that was educational, like. It was a break from my own stuff a little oh, bit, yeah. Um, yeah. but but yeah. Uh, yeah. So you you get stuff when you step out of your your own little world, right? Actually, just following on that thread of fun people we met this weekend. So uh, you actually were intrigued by this comic book. That yes, was a, a autobiography of David Bowie's life, and which looked so cool. But there was a fair amount of independent comic creators. Yes. Um, we were at Lakeland, Florida, and um, it was a really fun convention. Mm-hmm. And I got into conversation with a couple of comic book creators. Mm-hmm. And as, as we've discussed, um, there's ways to, to use the storylines and stuff from Crossing the Gods and translate that into comics, obviously. Yes. And some of my followers on my social media know that I, I, I've talked about maybe making a independently produced comic book and, you know, whatever the time frame is. But, um, so it was really interesting, not just to get to know them for who they are, because they're cool people, but also it, it's paying attention to another promise I made myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a resolution. But it's like, you gotta, you got to make a comic book, Dan. you got to make that sometime before you die. <laughs> You're getting older. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't, doesn't have to be a comic book run that goes on for you. Just make a comic book. You know? Yeah, and I and love that, that you that had... That was really cool. I love that you had the opportunity um, in our small breaks during the weekend... To have those conversations, because I remember walking yeah. over and seeing what they were doing, and then I I, I stopped by your table and said, "You got to see this, <laughs> like the this this Bowie comic, like yeah. like the there's the texture yeah. of it, whatever. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna uh, pick one up and support that artist. Um, it just was nice. It was nice that that we were because a lot of times it's like the voice actors are sitting in one place and the and the artist alley is yeah. somewhere else, and we might and sometimes there aren't comic book artists at that at a convention. I mean, right. it's not always the case right yeah. i mean it was very cool that there was a you know a batman comic book artist next to me um but oh, yeah but but yeah. i just thought it was great that you had that opportunity to to really have conversations with those people because yeah once again i'm i'm looking at that the the way that they put their stuff together what they're doing and i'm <laughs> and i'm doing you know i'm doing reconnaissance i'm 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 thinking yeah, yeah. i'm thinking sure. hey man this is really cool. Like, I have no idea how any of that stuff works, but um, y- I'm sure you want to find out from these people what they did because it's it. This is right up your alley in terms of what you and I'm going to say this should do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for sure. 
Was that why you wanted the name of Simon Beasley, the comic book artist? Because you were talking to the Batman comic book artist. Yeah, he, he we had met yeah. before at some at some earlier convention, and and he had he had the Batman uh, comic book on his uh, table, and uh, we were talking about stuff because I loved his his slogan was something like everything about capes and cowls. That was his slogan, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. I said, I'm a huge Batman fan. I said, and actually, Dan got me a. A, a wonderful sketch from uh, one of the Batman artists and of course I was drawing a blank because I'm old so uh, that's why I was asking <laughs> you and when I told him who it was he went oh oh yeah I bet he did <laughs> <laughs> I, and, I, and so, I love that no that was su- it's such a nice gift that you got me I mean it, 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 you, I've shown you where it hangs <sighs> in the studio but like well it's it's, yeah. it's 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 right behind me when I'm working and I see it every time I walk into the studio it greets me um it's just so cool I, I mean it really such a nice gift oh well you are well worth it and I was happy also to support Simon Beasley or Beasley yes not exactly sure uh um I believe he said Beasley but um anyway and for those who don't know this comic book artist uh he was doing a lot of coming to attention in the 80s painterly style very um, interpretive, meaning it doesn't look exactly like reality, and yet he renders things in a way that look completely, you know, photorealistic. So it's a nice combination of exaggeration and realism. And that sketch um, is very moody. I love it. The Batman. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I thought that was a perfect fit for yep, you. So. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So what about you? But, what, uh, did did mm-hmm. you not, not to cut you off there? But did you? Uh, no. Have you? Uh, have you? Um, come up with a resolution that might not be anchored in the new year, but yet part of this new year? I too, I try to take a little bit, you know, whatever lift helps, whatever, you know, wind in the sail helps. So I, while I'm not a ardent New Year's resolutionist, I, I, I'll take that reflective time to, to use to my advantage. And I was uh, visiting in-laws uh, you know this christmas you know one one christmas is your family the other christmas is the in-laws and so that enabled me to take these nice long walks and great for reflection and um one of the things that was becoming clear to me not that it was a new th- um thought to have but as you were saying what are you really doing with your time and right now, uh, part of the reason why uh, we haven't been producing as much The Heart of the Cards lately has to do with me being swamped with some other uh, kind of work. Um, I, I don't want to get into what it is because I don't want there to be this impression that I disparage it or that I don't like it. Um, it is occupying a lot of time and will be not only uh, for this month, but for the next month and maybe even the month after. And it's great to be in demand um, and and to have that kind of stuff lined up. What's not great about it, and again, this has nothing to do with the actual stuff that I'm doing, right? Um, it only has to do with that I really want to be doing something else. So um, it's like hanging out with like the nicest, funniest person in the world, but... <laughs> You know, you're in love with somebody else, right? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and I, and I, and I feel you. Like I, I know, I know. It's very, it's, it's hard to, and I, and we're not complaining about it, but it's, it's hard to make it seem like the, the fact that we're doing what we do enjoy doing, right? Being the voice actor is great. Um, not every project is our favorite, but it's still, it's a, it's, a, it's. I, I am, I'm thankful for this career. But it's hard to convey to someone who might not be working in this industry that sometimes, you know, you know, just the idea or, who, of, or somebody who dreams of doing right, what they do that just and they can't understand why. Yes. Why you want? And just doing yeah. the work doesn't mean it's always satisfying. You know, it's that it's that you're trying to figure out like, well, you know, making a living. Yes, that is very, very important. But. You know, if you're if you're working on something all the time that is not satisfying whatsoever, and it's only about the money, y- you and I are are that's not how our DNA works you, as as people. Um, we appreciate being able to put food on the table and taking care of our family. That is, of course, number one. But to to it, I know what you're saying by saying that your time is still also, uh, if not more important. <laughs> than, than, than the, yeah. you know that. 
Yeah. And from and so for me, it's it's reinforced why we have a drama to productions. Mm-hmm. I know there's nothing else I'd really rather be doing than putting time and effort to bring the projects that we're working on to the next level. Mm-hmm. I've accepted that Crossing the Gods is just going to take the time it takes. Yep. But the the Cure for Grief audio drama, the, we could we could get that done and out uh, in a month. Right. You know, um, and and keeping up with the podcast, which is, we met a number of people who followed the podcast and I love it when we are able to meet people in person and mm-hmm. um and I always ask what is it about the podcast um that you like or you know that you find interesting or what and it's great to hear how the things we talk about are I think some of the comments I I hear are you know it, it people find it encouraging or sometimes soothing or re- reassuring is I guess is the word I'm looking for um and uh, and I also try. I also ask, try to make sure that we aren't coming off as pretentious, and people are saying, "Oh no, 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 no," which is good because we're we're not about that. Um, and uh, but I miss having these conversations. Mm-hmm. I like having this podcast experience right. more regularly. Right. I like taking time, you know, and and trying to have a conversation that is addressing these things that matter the the creativity and the inspiration and dealing with what we're dealt sure um which is really just another way of living your, saying you know you're living your life right? yeah and also making it uh, i mean you know i i think some of the feedback is is it just reinforces um how many people are trying to figure out a way to pursue their own sure their their own sure. path and their and 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 the things the struggles that they're dealing with um some mm-hmm. of the best comments I got these last two weekends were things like, um, I feel like I'm getting to really know you two so well. Oh, yeah. And understand yeah. your the your your two perspectives, two guys that um, if you just sort of thought about what they did for a living, you'd say, well, they have very similar, you know, ba- you know, this is what they do, similar careers. And and I'm, I'm sure that they had this similar, you know, path. And then once <laughs> they listen, mm-hmm. they're like, wow. So. Here's two guys that I would think would be sort of similar, are extremely different in terms of their path. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And maybe that gives somebody who doesn't feel like they're, you know, uh, following the the same road that everybody else is supposed to, that they have an opportunity themselves. Right. right? Wait a second. My path might make sense now because these two guys took their own (laughs) path. Um, So I like that. I like that part of it. Um, I think that that's. You mentioned that at the panel. we Yeah. And. Yeah, I think that really helped a lot of people think about that in a, in a new way. Yeah, I mean, right. how many times has someone said to you, "Well, I live in this small town, and I and there's nothing this, mm-hmm. you know, and I, you know, I, I there's, there's nobody working on this kind of stuff or whatever. What do I do?" And we've explained like you could be a big fish in a small pond, and we talk about the opportunities that are in every city that I, has any sort of media that things like that, uh, and and they go, "Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense." Or now, you know, with the interwebs, you have a lot more, you know, you can reach a lot more people. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I. I you, you're telling your story, so I didn't. I didn't mean to sidetrack that. Oh well, that. and yes. also, no, no, no. That's fine. Um, and um, just, just to add into that, what you were just talking about, though, these opportunities that that are right there in front of you, even though you think you're far removed from the path you would prefer to be on. Um, one of the artists I was talking to, Liana Kangas, an illustrator, uh, who's done stuff for IDW and and uh, Dark Horse Comics and uh, other publishers. Uh, a friend of hers at, at at her table was interested in doing voiceover. Really? And so, yeah. And so on one of my lunch breaks, I carved out, you know, some time to to give her some consultation or whatever. And what she was pursuing was not a commercially minded endeavor at all. She was more coming at uh, a perspective of preserving fan fiction. Hmm. Okay. In an auditory format, in an audible format. Interesting. Um, yeah, which I thought was a cool... I thought that was a perfect example of somebody following the thing that really spoke to them. I mean, that is not probably a huge money-making endeavor. Right. But it's meaningful. Yeah. 
it's cool that you share like the the the, the creatives from different <laughs> uh different <laughs> genres were all sort of uh like blending together with the things that they like yeah right we're talking yeah. comics with them and they're talking voiceovers with us it's like oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's right we're all just creative right There's... <laughs> well and yeah and i i i you were a part of my first conversation with Liana. Yeah. And and you brought up Crossing the Gods because you knew I wouldn't. Yes, I know. And I know. <laughs> I, it's so unfair that I make you be my cheerleader. <laughs> hey, um, man, you, you don't make me do anything. I, I, I wanted to share that because once they started talking about what they were working on, I was like, well, right. funny you should mention this sort of, you know, uh, you know audio meets comic book. You know, Dan's doing right. that right now. Well, yeah, and I and I was just going to say that the follow up conversation I had with Liana the next day, because you know we just got two days to meet yeah, people, yeah. right? And and Saturday is really the day. Sunday you might have some time, but usually, you know, you're you're setting up to get back home halfway through that day. And anyway, but uh, yeah, but having some crossover with audio and and what they're doing as visual artists, I would totally be into exploring that. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they can be part of the Andromeda troupe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I was looking at some of the stuff that she had. Or or we could be a part of their troupe, whatever they're doing. Right. I mean, you know, that's that's what's so cool about this. I mean, I, I really feel like this environment is just it's just so creative. Um, I know yes. that, you know, when we get a chance to walk around the floor and just look at all the different things that are going on. Which I love to do. I forced two more artists to sign their uh, their art before <laughs> I signed it for them. Once again, I oh, reminded them. They're, I'm you. like, hey, there's something wrong with this. And they're like, what, what, what? I'm like, you didn't sign it. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, anytime, I said, especially if, like, you're, you're giving it to me, um, I'm probably going to take a picture of it and give you a shout out. Your name should be on it. And they were like, oh, yeah, I never thought about that, <laughs> which is great. I mean, it's great that they never thought about the 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 business the promotional side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. like, hey, you know, you can have a little bit of that, too, you know, especially when you're so I mean, some of these people, my goodness, they are so talented. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. We're not just being nice. No. What, yes, it's it's kind that we say that, but we really mean it. I mean, there was a there was a woman that that gave me a um um some she she did a really cool picture a pokemon picture that was in a really cool style and i liked it and i thought that's really neat so what else are you doing she's like oh this is my first convention i'm a, i'm a vendor um like you know i'm I, I think she was like i'm a homemaker and i decided i wanted to do this and so i'm gonna do this and i was like cool she goes i also made these stickers for you and of course i put them all over my my coffee thermos right that's what i've been trying to do is like decorate it like some 1960s vw bug um but uh it's I was like, this is so cool. She's like, yeah, I have a printer at home. I do that. And I'm like, wow, technology is so advanced that someone who like last month was like, this is what I'm doing with my days, blah, blah, blah. Wait a second. Now I want to be an artist. And all of a sudden she's printing and making stickers at home. I love, I just loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So another thing uh, that was encouraging about this was the the standard of quality of these self-published comic book artisans uh, and some of them are both writers and artists and it's just amazing to see how easy it is not to say that it's easy but easier it is to do something like that i mean you're able to produce your music mm -hmm. independently yep and to a very high standard yeah your cds look great thank you appreciate and it and and you paid attention to how to put them together. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, so it, it's not like you aren't working to get it to a good standard. But that wasn't so possible when you were a teenager. No, no. And that's what's so, it's so amazing. I mean, I remember like yeah. having the, the paper printer to put a CD label on with this thing that you sure. have to stamp. Yep. And it's we like, all, we were there. And it's like, that doesn't that. look good. That's not, that, like, you know, that's not, that's not cool. Now it's like, you know, there's a there's a there's a strong argument that sometimes you don't need these giant companies that control everything. You can do stuff yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And having the technical resources, having pro tools, mm -hmm. you know, that you can that you can use. Yeah. Having um the the iPad, uh Liana, I mean I I draw on an iPad. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, when I first was talking 
uh, Tuliana, I noticed that she was using the same program that I was using. Right. And, you know, so when we were just chit-chatting about, you, you have a studio in your lap. It's amazing now. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, so, and that you can get something published that you can actually afford to publish. And that book you got, I mean, it, it looks fantastic. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's called Bowie, Stardust, Ray Guns, and Moon Age Daydreams, which is a great title. Um, but the but so so there's three people that sort of put this thing together. It's uh, Michael Allred is the artist. Oh, he's a classic. Yeah, yeah, he's a great right. Great and artist. then Steve Horton is the writer, um, which is really mm-hmm. cool. And then Laura uh, Allred is the colorist for it. So um, oh, it's very like, good. It's, but what's so cool about this is that um, it's got a hardcover and it's probably uh, eight and a half by eleven kind of size. Um, yeah, it could be like a coffee table book. It's yeah. Big. Yeah, it's really it's it's got a it's like a great weight. I I mean I liked I liked picking it up when I looked at it, but it's also like the it's truly a cool chronological story of Bowie. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. and uh you know, being a big rock fan and being a huge Bowie fan, I was already drawn right. to it a little bit, but then I but then picking it up, I was like, "Oh, this is really it's it just tactile. Like I it felt great to pick it up and read. Um, oh, it, it feels so solid. And yeah. The, and, the pages are a good weight. Yeah, and, and it's funny. It's like I uh, most of the um, comics that I had as a kid, um, they would be what I would read while I ate my breakfast. Um, so my mom would always make me like a really nice breakfast. She was kind of fancy. So it'd be like, you know, I'd have some like a cheese omelet or something like that or, you know, and, and uh, English muffins and stuff like that. Um, but... Uh, all of my comics as a kid have like cheese and eggs on, on some of the pages because I would be so engrossed in like reading them that the comic was in front of me and the plate of food was kind of off on the side as I was eating. So stuff, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I still get accused by my wife of eating like a five-year-old. Um, but I, I, the, 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 the reason that I say that is because I'm afraid to read this because I'm probably going to sit down and eat while I read it, and I don't want to get anything <laughs> on the pages. <laughs> you you may just have to change your habits a little. I know, but Maybe. I just love I just yeah. that, that that flashback of like you know ten year old me oh, yeah. with yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know face planted inside a comic while <laughs> snarfing down in a you know a, a cheese omelet. <laughs> but yeah, great book. So that that book is so cool. Um, this may not be self-published. They may have used a smaller publisher. Do you, can you find the publisher on that? Insight Comics. That's the name of the book. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. I, uh, I, 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 I haven't heard of that, but that doesn't mean anything. No. Um, yeah. But th- that's just another example. Whether it's a smaller publisher or, like, you know, that's what they call themselves to self-publish, which is totally cool in its own right. Um, there's just, there's a lot of advantages out there that weren't there before. Yeah, and he's a New York Times bestseller. So it's, I mean. Yeah, there you he, go. Yeah, that doesn't mean he, he still can't say, well, I'm going to do this myself, right? Um, and oh, I, for sure. And, and because the quality is what it is, really, why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, and g- g- dialing it back to resolutions yes. and, and reflecting on how we're using our time. Um, the other thing I've, I've been bumping up against uh, that I noticed for myself is it's somewhat related to what we we're talking about, about committing to work that is perhaps less than entirely fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And I get myself into situations where the workload is just so much that I have to, or I feel that I have to, um, use every part of my day that isn't, um, feeding my kids. Yeah. Right. Or doing, you know, some obviously more mandatory, uh, thing, um, that it's all just consumed by this other stuff. Right. And that's not good. That's not good. I know that I feel best when I have some time to take a walk. Right, at, you know, at least once a day. Doesn't have to be a super long walk. I but, love that you do that. You know, I love that you do that. Oh, it's great. It's great for my head, you know, uh, among other things. Um, and uh, yeah, so and and those feel like selfish rewards, but they're not. They actually make me a better person. So I need to redo the emotional and psychological math on that stuff. 
that's probably another way of saying work-life balance but but yeah that's that's where I'm at I'm I'm realizing okay it's not selfish to want to self care <laughs> do you <laughs> and, uh, yeah. do you listen to music when you walk or do you listen to oh, do, yeah, do, yeah, do you do yeah, you just yeah. listen to like thanks for listening the to the heart of the cards with Dan Green and Eric through. Stewart we hope this Good conversation is a variety of things to very often I'm listening whatever to your journey get into we look forward to crossing paths again um, in the next episode and this is Veronica Taylor. When and on I'm behalf dealing of a with, drama to production, with something that's we commanding my well. attention, I don't want to say problem, although sometimes it is a problem, um, but sometimes it's more of a thing or whatever. A drama. And a conversation Always I wish I had with somebody. Right. Sometimes I will do that out loud when I'm walking. I, I always wear headphones, whether or not I'm listening to anything, so that people can assume that that guy's on the phone with someone. Right. But very often what I'm doing is that I'm working out some of sometimes some of my own BS, you know, and I'm really talking to myself. <laughs> no, saying, that's that, that was stupid. <laughs> that that but that's interesting that that you 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 don't keep it locked inside your head when you're talking to yourself like maybe someone like I uh, you know, I've been known to do that. Um you're actually saying it out loud. That's it's interesting and and that's I I guess hearing the words useful. yeah, I, I, yeah. I, that could be very helpful. Yeah, I I find it useful, and also I I it helps me clarify what I'm really getting at or or trying to figure out or mm -hmm. you know where the gray areas are. So, um, but um, and sometimes uh, I'll be talking on the phone with somebody, and very small percentage of the time I'm listening to news, um, right. which I probably do too much of anyway. Right. So, but with the music, uh, so good and recently Peter Gabriel who's my favorite artist and who also happens to be a musician uh, released an album for the first time in 20 years and it's very strong mm -hmm. and um, so I've been enjoying familiarizing myself with that but it also led me to a retrospective ah. of his work going way back to Genesis yeah and you know the, the prog rock stuff and I was listening to that on walks o over the holiday and that was so much fun and even though he's one of my favorite artists, I hadn't really been listening to his stuff for for several years. Right. It's not that I didn't like it. It's just that that wasn't where my head was at. Yeah. Um, so it's been nice to to go back and appreciate and, and see his journey as a creative. Yeah. Uh, it's and, nice and that his new album made you go back and revisit the... For the, sure. That's cool. That's cool. And there's definitely there's definitely stuff that's that you can see at the very beginning... That carries through in a good way, not a repetitious, unoriginal way, um, to some things he's doing even today. So that's cool to see. Yeah, I love I love when it's like either someone's like a select like a musician's birthday or or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. So you, you go, yeah, oh yeah, I should really put that stuff back on for a second. Like I think today is uh, Neil Diamond's eighty third yeah. birthday, right? <laughs> and so it's like yeah. I'm like I'm gonna go, you know listen to some Neil Diamond today just to celebrate that. And it's not like I haven't listened to him in a while. It's just I should really spend his birthday listening to more of him, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Why not have a Neil Diamond day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I guess maybe that's another thing, too, that's become a little clearer for me is the value of our inspirations. Yes, Yes, totally. Yes, I I think that where we get our energy from. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what I'm discovering is, like with with Peter Gabriel, um, but other stuff as well. That there are these these nuggets that uh, that still have have positive uh, energy for me. You know, to 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 use. Um, and I'm also discovering new ones and with these interactions with the fans. Honestly, I know it sounds like I'm just sort of um, <laughs> being ingratiating or whatever, but um, but there there really is something so wonderful about getting uh, to meet all of these people. And of course, you know, I mean, they're saying complimentary things. That's nice. Yes. But that's not the part that really um, stands out to me the most. No. And yeah. So there was a guy... Uh, and he was sharing with me that it's a it's a story we've heard before, a similar story where the the, the stuff that we've been involved in helped him through a hard time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he was describing there was this period where uh, like every 
every few months, it was it was as though he was going to another funeral Oof. of someone that he knew. He had older friends, some of whom were passing away. And I, and I think this was not entirely related, but somewhat related to the COVID period. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and one of the people that passed away was a fiance. Oh. I mean, that's huge. Okay. And, um, yeah, so, um, but even that, you know, sad conversation is something that I, I see as a wonderful thing to be able to happen. Right. Um, between two people. We <laughs> didn't know anything about each other much, really. I mean, I didn't know him at all, and he only knew, you know, some work that I'd done. Um, and yet we had this really lovely exchange about things that matter. It's such, I mean, it's it's a, that's a tough story, but it's such a, um, the environment that we're in with the convention people, um, mm-hmm. I think it's a, it's a safe place to talk about stuff and, and to share mm-hmm. and to to not be judged and so you know we've said mm-hmm. this before but i but i just i love i love that the environment i just think it's such a great way that people can actually be kind to each other so the fact that this story was shared with you um i'm not surprised um because mm-hmm. you know that's mm-hmm. that's the environment um i also you know talking about um being sort of jaded with my age of like oh, I gotta hang it up and I'm, I'm getting tired of this the the <laughs> the youthful creative uh people they give me a shot in the arm of like okay like you know that's there's still there's still so much positive energy there's still so much that's that's bubbling up that's that the next generation of it um that's helpful it's helpful you know, it's like I, I love seeing that. So, um, you know, even when I'm like, OK, what am I doing with my time as, as we're talking about? Um, and then you see somebody who's being creative that way. You're like, OK, good. So um, their youthful energy is also inspiring me as an old man who thinks, well, what what's left? What am I supposed to do? Oh, wait, here's here's something new or here's 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 just energy around you. Um that helps, mm-hmm. you know, make you look at your own stuff and say, yeah, I, I have more. To, I have more to say. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's rejuvenating. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my friend, um, I think it was a good resolution to <laughs> talk about resolutions. So we're going to resolve this. I maybe we are. <laughs> the fans are like, please, um, the two of you, stop it. <laughs> it's, it's, we know, we get it. Dad jokes, shut up. Hey, we're dads. Um, <laughs> come on, we we earned it. That's right. Um, so uh, well, and to all the listeners and followers out there, some of whom we've had the very good fortune to be able to meet in person. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. Again, we. Uh, we recognize that there's been a little bit of a gap, but we're, we're doing our best to keep this going. We, we still love doing it. Um, and Eric, I always enjoy an opportunity to get a chance to speak with you. Thank you. You as well, Dan. Thank you. And we can all look forward to the next time that we can have another conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice.